Take a couple of good deep breaths once you're laying down. Nice inhales and exhales. With the trees starting to change the color of their leaves and starting to release those leaves, we have the intention of release today. So this can be on different levels. So maybe you're just purely a physical level today, just releasing the various tension that we hold in the body. But there's different systems that talk about emotions that we also hold in the body. And so as we go through some of the major muscle groups today, I'll list off what is said that what types of emotions are said to be held in that specific area when we're in a stretch. And so if you feel any of that within your own system, if any of it resonates with you, imagine you could use your breath to also help release that emotional level. No pressure if today's just physical, that's it's kind of fun to just work through that the different levels. Uh, but I'll be listing that off so that, that we can come to a different type of awareness of what's going on in our body, perhaps. So first things first, let's start to bring the knees into the chest. Hug the knees and rock slightly left and right. This is a release for the low back. And so as we're getting started here, lower back is said to hold guilt, shame, and unworthiness. So especially as we're taking some of these nice initial stretches, um, including the legs here. Notice also what it's doing for the low back. So stop the rocking, take the right ankle, place it on the left thigh, the figure four, hug it in. Lower back is connected to a lot of major muscle groups. And so as we're releasing some of these tight areas that surrounding it, imagine it, it's just helping that lower back, the guilt, shame, unworthiness ideas. From here, release the left leg long to the ground. Let the right leg extend up to sky, moving into just a light hamstring stretch. Grab on wherever it feels easy to reach right now. It's still super early in class. So no pressure to need to grab to the toes yet if that's not easy. This right leg bends, the left leg comes in, placing left ankle on right thigh. gentle pressure, whatever amount of hugging in gives you just enough stretch, just that right amount. right leg to floor, left leg takes its turn up to sky, grab on. And 
let this bend, the leg bends. We're heading into a couple of core things and then a twist. So that focus is on stomach, which is inability to process emotions. So let the hand scoop up the head, press behind the back of the head, hold the head up. And then we're twisting the right elbow to touch the left knee, the other leg covers. Exhale, switch. You can go fast if you wish. You can go nice and slow. But feel how this activates through the stomach area. Increasing difficulty if you wish. The leg that comes in straightens up to the sky, circles down. Straighten up, circle down. The knees come in, cross the right thigh over the left thigh, open the arms left and right, and then the legs fall over to the left. But really keep the shoulders connected to the ground. And then as the weight of the legs pulls with gravity over to the left, feel the stomach area twisting around. Inability to process emotion. Breathe into that if that resonates with you. Because this is an opportunity to release some of that, like leaves of the tree. So lifting the legs back up, uncross, recross with the other leg, and the legs fall to the right this time. Same thing, really focus on how much can the belly area twist. Last breath here into belly. Beautiful. Uncross the legs. Take a moment with happy baby. Grab the feet. This can be about the hips if you like. Just gently pulling on the hip, the feet. You could add rocking for that low back if you wish. Or straightening and bending of the legs if that feels amazing. So your choice. What feels most helpful, especially to low back. Last little gift to that area before we move on. As we release, let's roll like a ball a couple of times. Eventually, we'll come up just to an easy, comfortable seated position. We'll do a couple of neck, neck stretches. Let's clasp hands behind the back. Shift hands to right hip or right waist. And then the right ear drops over right shoulder. The neck is fear and repressed self-expression. If this isn't quite your tight part of the neck, 
you could change a little bit, maybe the head tilt slightly in front of the shoulder or slightly behind. So really play around until you find your tight spot and, and then send several good breaths there. rises. Hands go to left hip or left waist, left ear to left shoulder. Fear and repressed self-expression. As the head rises, release the hands, shift into cobbler's pose, bottoms of feet together, the spine lengthen up before we start to tilt forward. Ultimately, allowing a nice release. Allowing the head to droop forward enough that you're still stretching through back of neck. So same type of emotions as the last one but also adding in this pelvis for the cobbler's part of it. And that is fear. You'll notice the last one also had fear, but fear held in the neck is different than fear held in the pelvis. In the neck, it's more like a, like a control and perfectionism type of fear. In the pelvis, usually it's more of either safety or inability to trust others, that kind of fear. So if any of that resonates, breathe into it. It's safe to release some of that fear. Release it like the leaves of the tree. Deep breath here. Inhale. Exhale. As the spine starts to rise, scoop up the knees, send the heels forward, moving into hamstrings, circle the arms up, inhale, tilt forward, straight spine as long as you can, and exhale, release. Hamstrings is grief. You get to that spot at any point that it's not nearly as deep as when you first started and you want more, breathe straighten from the low back. See if you can tilt just a little further forward with that straight spine and then really release.
As the spine gently rises, swing both legs to the back of the mat, coming into child pose. Sink back. So how this one, today we're focusing on the upper back part of it. So the shoulder blades spread and open. Almost like we have more space for breath in our upper back. Our back is grief, sorrow, sadness. up to kneeling, threading the needle with our arms, the right arm stretches up, and that shoulder all the way down. The left hand can wind around the low back or come up to the top of the mat, walking up to the top right corner. Your choice. This one's all about the shoulders. Shoulders is burdens and responsibilities. That weight that goes on our shoulders as we're trying to hold everything together. Right hand, or sorry, left hand slide in front of the face, press into it. Coming back to neutral, take a moment with the cat. Now, neutral spine, left arm floats. Pause for just a moment and thread that arm all the way under and through. Same variation if the right hand was. Um, if you brought the other hand to the low back last time, bring the right hand there now. Otherwise, right hand up to top left corner. Our breath flows in, out, and plant the right hand in front of face, press into it, neutral kneeling, take some cat cows, rounding up and down. Focus on the middle back for this. Middle back is insecurity and powerlessness. So how high up can the middle back go? How far down can it drop? Security and powerlessness. Walking the hands forward from the neutral spine, lift the knees up. We'll lower ourselves all the way belly down to ground. And then we're taking the back bend of your choice. So it can be as easy as sphinx, maybe up to kind of like a half cobra, the hands a bit wider, or maybe full cobra. So your choice will be here for a couple of breaths. 
but this one we're trying to stretch the throat area. So lift the chin up and jut the jaw forward a little bit. Throat has to do with repressed self-expression. Last inhale, exhale, and we'll travel back to child for a moment just to release. We'll return back to that spot in our body. Your choice when to head to downward facing dog whenever the low back is ready. So we've covered a lot of the major muscle groups. You'll start to feel us connecting to a lot of those areas. So we start to flow just a little bit more. So whenever you're ready, we'll head up to the top of the mat, forward fold. And we'll stretch through hamstrings. Exhale, how arms circle up. Gentle arch back, and hands down to the heart. Beautiful. So shifting our weight up to the left foot, we float the right knee. Bring the balance, try to connect the foot down to the ground. And opening it up, kick back to warrior three. Soft land warrior one. Putting up warrior two. Extended side angle, rest the left elbow. Right arm stretches up and over. Warrior two. Reverse. Warrior two. Half moon, so shorten the stance if you need. And cartwheel your way down. So even the throat open here. Softly landing down to forward fold. Maybe hugging around the calves. Try to clasp the hands. See if that can invite you just a little bit closer. Next inhale, we rise. Standing on the right, float the left knee. So the grounding down and then the rest of the spine pushing up. So that length as we open warrior three. Soft land warrior one. So warrior two. Extended side angle. Warrior two. Reverse. Warrior two. Shorten stance if needed. Cartwheel down. 
Up and down. Easy landing. And now right. All hands down to heart. Shift weight to left to right foot tree pose. Then feel the spine lengthening up. Maybe arms join in. Release the foot, kick back, warrior three. Not quite as far back, landing, preparing for a pyramid. So not quite as right of a stance. Hips are squared forward, and then start to bend at the waist. Eventually, when you're halfway there, start to release the hands to legs. Floor. can be softly bent. We're lifting up to warrior three, so that left leg lifts, swings up and back. Back the hips and the toes behind you, hips are opening. You're ready at this point, you'd like to take wild thing, continue to flip, open. Even just a breath there. And eventually unwind, square hips, three-legged dog, Adaranga perhaps with the lifted leg, back bend in your place, I'll pose our down dog. Heels continuing to drop, hips continuing to lift. Move forward, slightly bend the knees, step walker jump forward. Maybe we can start to inch some of the fingers, tips spread under our feet, standing on them. We're getting a bit warmer. Release the hands. Next inhale, rise. Into the heart. Shifting weight to right foot. Tree pose left. Spine rises. Maybe arms. Warrior three. Not as quite far back. Preparing for pyramid. Two straight legs. Hands on the hips to make sure they're square. Start to bend forward. And once you're sure that they're still square, start to release hands to shins or forward.
her hamstrings is grief. Take time and space to open some of that up. Front knee, plant the hands. The right leg comes up and back. Three like a dog. Snap the hips and the toes behind. Option to land a wild thing if you wish. Winding back to squared hips, three like a dog. Cobra. <laughs> I really got you forward that one. <laughs> and down dog our child. Coming up to top of that. Next inhale, rise. Hands to heart. Shifting weight to left foot, try to grab a right hand to right foot behind. Quad stretch. So usually I start with knees close together. If you're not in a quad stretch already, scoop your tailbone under. If you still need more, then pull the knee a little bit further back. Option for a dance, I suppose, if you like. I usually put my grip to the inner part of the foot now. And then I'm going to counter and oppose what the two things are doing. So arms trying to continue lifting. The leg is also trying to lift. It's a nice arch through the spine. And when you're ready to release, it's warrior three. Full warrior one. Passing hands behind the back, bow forward, shoulder stretch. Drop the hands down to the ground. We're transitioning towards standing split. So the hands bump forward a bit. Put the right leg. Maybe you're playing with balance or maybe hands just stay. So balance would be walking hands closer to the feet. Maybe just one finger on each side. If you still want more, maybe one hand wraps around the calf or maybe both. Releasing out of the balance, we're taking right knee to land on the outside of the left foot, and then sit back. Beautiful. Take a twist, right hand or right elbow hooks around the knee, left hand behind, lengthen the spine up, twist, opening through that belly area. Stomach is inability to process emotions. Mm 
you are trying to spine forward. Leave this right leg where it is. The left leg unwinds all the way back into pigeon. Pick up the hips, you're squaring them. Walking your way down. Specifically focusing on the outer hip aspect of pigeon pose. Outer hip, outer thigh is frustration and impatience. here is fine or if you'd like to play with um, perhaps trying to plant the hands and maybe the left hand trying to grab for the left foot you can play with that it's a bit deeper but just normal pigeon is also perfectly fine Do the hands, release back to a recovery pose. I'll suggest kneeling with huge hip circles, but if you prefer something else, that's fine. Down dog. Top of that. Inhale, rise. Hands to heart. Shifting weight to right foot. Grab left, the left, left hand, the left foot behind back. Again, quad stretch, so tailbone scoops under. Maybe the knee needs to pull back a little. Option for dancer. Flip the grip. Reach left to that. directly into warrior three and all the way back warrior one it's all good <laughs> sometimes one side it just doesn't work as well <laughs> Press hands behind back and bow forward shoulder stretch And release to floor. Standing split, bump the head forward, float left leg. Maybe play with balance, maybe not. Uh, 
out of the balance. The left knee lands to outside of right foot. Step back. Twist, so hook left hand or left elbow. Lengthen up the spiral around, getting into stomach twist. Unwind, pigeon. Frustration and impatience. to stay here a bit longer or put the hands, grab right hand for right foot. Releasing out into a recovery pose, perhaps same one as before, kneeling with hip circles. That feels good. Shift your hips back and then lock them off to the right. The toes are tucked to the left. Left hand grabs left foot. Right hand reaches up and over. Left ear drops to left shoulder. We're heading into another neck stretch. So as the right hand starts to return slowly, you're looking to find the spot that's perfect neck and shoulder stretch. So maybe it'll end up being about shoulder height or slightly lower than that, but fill that spot where it pulls the neck and shoulder area nice and long. On the neck, press self-expression, as well as fear. starts to rise, shift hips to the other side. Once you're grabbing onto right ankle, drop the right ear down, left arm up and over. And then you're ready to slowly return. Take your time, maybe shoulder height or lower until you find the neck opening. Head starts to rise. Swing the legs around in front of you. 
we're wanting to head into glutes. So this could look like right leg in front, cross leg, right shin stack, or maybe right knee stack. It's whatever lets both sitting bones easily sit down. And then by leaning forward, that's when we start to get really deep into the glutes. Find the one that's comfortable, tolerable, definitely no pain on the knee. Start to ease the way forward. Glutes are anger and rage. Rising up, let the legs switch, the so cross leg, shin stack or knee stack with left in front or on top, and ease back in. Raising up, open the legs out nice and wide, walk the hands through, inner thighs, fear of vulnerability. up. We'll start to head back toward a Shavasana shape. If there's last things you need to do, go right ahead. But start to prepare for that shape. And then there'll be one last thing we'll do before our final release. So take your time. No sense of rush if you're still moving a bit, but before you head to Shavasana, we'll do a little jaw muscle release. So this is the muscle that connects the jaw to the skull. You can start closer to the ears and then sweep down. It's kind of the space right in front of where the teeth are. And sweep down a little bit closer to the mouth. You don't have to go all the way. It's, it's really that outer jaw area that tends to hold the tension but using maybe thumb or pointy finger or the knuckles. Slowly sweep in, hoping to release that tight muscle. Jaw is repressed desire. Good. 
Keep going as long as you feel that tension there. When you feel like it's released a little bit, you're welcome to head to your Shavasana sooner or later. Whenever you feel ready to release sooner or later for that final resting shape. At that point, the focus is diaphragm. Diaphragm holds panic. So as we're in our Shavasana today, your goal will be to take good inhales, longer exhales, but then pause after the exhale. That's where that diaphragm is completely relaxed. And then same thing, good inhales, Long exhale with a pause. Seeing the panic, you get to just be here, just rest for the next several minutes. Just simply breathe.
You can do deep in inhales. And exhales. Do simple movements to the body. Stretching out in ways that feel really nice. Perhaps a nice fetal position to one side if that feels good today. Maybe two or three more breaths until you feel ready to rise comfortably. Here we express gratitude for this fall season, reminding us that life doesn't always have to just be accumulation and growth, that it's healthy sometimes to take a moment to release and then rest. And so with this idea of release that we've practiced in the physical body and in the emotions today, with this inspiration to lead us into this week of release, let's allow ourselves to wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of oh, deep in hell now. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.